Taped live in New York City, the Chronic Rift presents the third annual Roundtable Awards, presenting awards in the science fiction, fantasy, comics, and horror fields. Tonight, part two, presenting awards in the book, short story, magazine, and comics categories, presented by Otherware author, Margaret Wander Bonanno, and a strange and ancient name author, Josepha Sherman. David, David Chelsea in Love, cartoonist David Chelsea, and nest robber writer, publisher, Joe Duffy. Folk singer, I'm going to have problems with this, but I'm going to say it anyway, I am <laughs> Sini, and comics writer, Glenn Homan. And I'm your MC, MC Hawkins, can't touch this. And here are your hosts, Andrew K. Lipitsky and Keith R. A. DeCandido. Thank you, Hawk. Welcome back. Last week we did part one where we did all the media stuff, where Buffy the Vampire Slayer inexplicably won Best Movie, I was beaten out for Best Character by an illiterate cat, and John S. Drew, our executive producer, came out and shouted, MINE! MINE! This week. <laughs> this week we are going to be presenting the literary half of the Roundtable Awards. Perhaps it'll be a little more low-key? <laughs> 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 Just, just a thought. Um, anyway, a fleeting one, I uh, hope. very fleeting one. Our first presenter is author Wander, uh, Margaret Wander Bonanno. <laughs> Margaret is the author of several popular Star Trek novels, including Dwellers in the Crucible and Strangers in the Sky, from the Sky, sorry, as well as the Others series. Here she is. Okay, I'm told I have to solo up here. Uh, the nominees for Best Writer of a Novel, Short Story, or Comic Book. Terry Bisson for the short story Next. C.J. Cherry for such novels as Chowner's Legacy and Hellburner. <laughs> Peter David for the novel Inzati and such comics as X Factor. C.S. Friedman for the novel Black Sun Rising. And Neil Gaiman for the comic book The Sandman. Uh, this is the third year in a row that both Peter David and Neil Gaiman have been nominated in this category. What are our next awards going to be about? Um, more literary stuff. These are specifically comic book related. Yes. People who we have coming up to present the comic book related uh, awards are David Chelsea and Joe Duffy. David uh, created the David Chelsea in Love uh, comic book, which is being collected by Eclipse. Uh, it should be out by the time this airs. And he also contributes to places like the New York Press. Joe has written pretty much every mainstream comic you can possibly think of, and also writes her own Nest Robber, which she also publishes. And you've already seen her tonight, and here they are. Yay. <laughs> Remember, these are the finest in sequential art chosen by you, cable viewers. The first award is the nominees for Best Editor of a Magazine, Anthology, or Comic Book. Uh, Karen Berger for such comics as Sandman. Mike Carlin for the four Superman comic books. Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling for the anthology Snow White, Blood Red. Christine Catherine Roosh for the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, and Stanley Schmidt for the magazine Analog. And the Possible nominees, except, of course, for the ones that won. Anyway, thank, thank you for the man in love. Thank you to the hardest working man in comics. <laughs> the remaining awards. No, Joe, you're not going to live that down, yes? <laughs> the remaining awards. Are we calm down, Keith? I'm, I was calm all along. Okay. This is me calm. You should see me excited. Oh. <laughs> 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 Lip of Andrea biting her tongue. Yes, anyway. Cover your children's ears at home, please. The remaining awards will be presented by Filker, I. Abersinai, and comics writer Glenn Hellman. Abby was uh, a Filker and an artist. She was on our folk singing episode. Glenn is the author of 101 Other Uses for a Condom, as well, and he's the publisher of the forthcoming bibliophile books on computer. And here they are. I'm glad one member of this staff got the pronunciation correct. Yeah. We are now, unfortunately, at the point of the show where, unfortunately, the writers ran out of time, and so we have no dialogue to work with. So I'll improvise this one, and you improvise the next oh, one. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Okay. Hold it. Rim. Uh, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, uh, this next category is one uh, pretty close to my heart because in addition to being a folk singer, I'm a degenerate ABBA hack. Uh, this award is for um, the nomination for the best fanzine. And those who know what a fanzine is, it's, uh, it's something produced by fans for fans. 
And for those who don't know, pick one up, for goodness mm. sakes. The nominees are Diagonal Relationship, Lands Lantern, L-A-N apostrophe S, Let's Fan Act, and Shonai, the C.J. Cherry fanzine. I should do, give you something to do. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> and the roundtable award goes That's to... That's almost the end. All we have left is the Hall of Fame. Um, in the last two years, cyberpunk forerunner William Gibson and Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry, yes, Star Trek again, it keeps just coming back, um, were inducted into the Hall of Fame. This year, they are joined by Dr. Isaac Asimov. It is not true that there would be no science fiction without Isaac Asimov. It would be very difficult to imagine the last 50 years without him. Uh, when people refer to the ABCs of SF, they're usually referring to Asimov, um, Bradbury, and Clark. Ever since his first story was published in Amazing in 1939, he was only 19 years old when that story was published. As a 24-year-old with a large collection of rejection letters, I resent this. But anyway, <laughs> Asimov has been an important force in the field, not only as a fiction writer, but as a scientist, as an editor, and as a humanist. He gave us the three laws of robotics, rules that guide artificial intelligence to this day. He wrote a science fact column in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction for three decades that was so influential, it took two writers to replace him. He flowed effortlessly from SF to mysteries to hard science to children's literature always maintaining his plot-driven style. In 1977, he had a magazine named after him, and in 1987, he received a deserved Grandmaster Award from the Science Fiction Writers of America. He continued his prolific output, writing, co-writing, or editing some 40 books a year, not to mention the shorter works, until he was hospitalized in late 1991. He died at the age of 72 in 1992. His widow, Janet Jepson Asimov, was unable to be here tonight due to a prior commitment, but she thanked us profusely for this honor bestowed upon her husband. It is our privilege to induct Dr. Isaac Asimov into our Hall of Fame. We have to. We have to. Oh, we we have, have, oh my God, we have a minute. We have to so fill okay. a minute. How about those mats, huh? I mean, what's going on? Oh, 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 I ask you. I ask you. Ladies and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the New York Yankees Appreciation Society. Um, in any event, that's it for the awards this year. We hope to see you next week. We hope to see you next year. Maybe it'll be three parts. Ah! Anyway, we'll see you then. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.